Section 7.3, we will be dealing with logarithms here. Before we get to logarithms, though, we're just looking at a quick reminder of inverse operations. If I had x squared, and it's going to equal 4, to, if I wanted to get x, the inverse operation would be the square root, and plus or minus. If I have the square root of x is equal to 7, the opposite of the square rooting would be 7 squared. If I have 3x is equal to 12, and I need to get x, the inverse operation of multiplication is division, so I would divide both sides. x plus 5 is equal to 7, the inverse operation would be subtraction, 7 minus 5. If I have the sine of x is equal to 0.3, I do the opposite, which is inverse sine sine to negative 1 of 0.3, also known as the arc sine of 0.3. If I have 3 raised to the x is equal to 9, and I need to find x, it's going to be log base 3 of 9. So the, what's happening here is, if I need to find x here as an exponent, so I need to do, to find, how do I find exponents? I use logarithms. Logarithms find exponents. That's the key idea here, right here. Exponent, logarithms find exponents. So the basic skills we need to know here is how to change something from exponential form into logarithmic form. and also how to change it back. If I have 4 raised to the x is equal to 16 in log form, this is my base, this is my exponent, and this is just a number. I'm going to write x is equal to log base 4 of 16. Log base 4 of 16. 2 raised to the x is equal to 1 eighth. x, which is the exponent, logarithms find exponents, so log base 2 of 1 eighth. 5 raised to the x is equal to 1 fifth, so the exponent would be log base is 5, put sub 5 there, of 1 fifth. 3 raised, raised to what number gives me 1? So x is equal to log base 3 of 1. And 10 raised to the x is equal to 10. So log base 10 of 10 is going to equal x. Now, something important here though. Actually, if the log is base 10, we're going to write it just log. We don't put log base 10 down here. This is what's called a common log. We'll get more, we'll, uh, get to this more in section 7.6 and 7.7. So I could, I would really write this as just log base 10 of 10 is equal to x. I don't actually have to write the 10 if it's base 10. Also in section 7.7 uh, 7, 7, we're going to get to the number e e is equal to 2.71828.1828. It's an irrational number, kind of like i. I'm sorry, kind of like uh, pi. And it keeps going on there. Never repeats, never ends. If we have log base e, we write it ln, which is the natural log. We'll get to that more later. Don't have to really worry about that now, but just giving you a heads up. So logarithms font. Uh, logarithms find the exponent. Now normally we kind of look at this and say, hey, I can figure out what that is. Why do I need a logarithm? Well, there's going to be other reasons we, we need those. But log base 3 of 81. If I have to evaluate this, 3 raised to what exponent gives me 81? So if you need to, think about it like this. 3 raised to some exponent is 81. What is that exponent? Well, that exponent is actually going to be 
4. 3 raised to the 4th is 81. And I, could, I would say that because 3 raised to the 4th is equal to 81. 16 raised to what exponent gives me 4? The answer is 1 half because 16 raised to the 1 half is equal to 4. We know the 1 half exponent is actually the square root. The square root of 16 equals 4, so that checks out. 5 raised to what exponent gives me 1 over 25? 5 raised to what number is equal to 1 over 25? I realize that this is actually 1 over 5 squared, which is 5 to the negative 2. So this is negative 2. 2 raised to what exponent gives me 1 eighth? I realize that 1 eighth is really 1 over 2 cubed, which is 2 to the negative 3. So 2 raised to what exponent gives me 2 to the negative 3? The answer is negative 3. 4 raised to what power gives me 1? 4 raised to what exponent gives me 1? Oh, well, we know this. The answer is 0. And if I have log base 10, which we would really just write as log of 100. 10 raised to what power gives me 100? And we would say 2. Logarithms find the exponent. 3 raised to what power gives me 81? The exponent is 4. 16 raised to what exponent gives me 4? The answer is 1 half. So that's how you, find, you use logarithms uh, when you have to, have to evaluate. Just think of it as 3 raised to what power gives me this number. Logarithms find exponents. Very, very important. Uh, let's say we had the following problem, though. Let's say I had log base 5 of uh, 25 is equal to 2. Make sure you can also go backwards and write it in exponential form. In exponential form. It would be 5 raised to the second is equal to 25. So the basic formula here is if I have some base raised to some exponent and it gives me some number, that is the same as the log of with base whatever of some number is equal to the exponent. Uh, I had some friends in high school who thought about it this way. This is the base, this is the exponent, this is the number. Log, base, number, exponent. And they called it Ben the Log Bunny. Ben the Log Bunny bunny yeah kind of weird but it's 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 how they remembered what numbers go where base exponent number is equal to log base of number equals exponent bend the log bunny graphing these uh we're going to graph log is equal to log base 2 of x plus 3 find the domain and range of this uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be, I'm going to start with, I'm not going to look at this as y equals log base 2 of x. I'm going to think of it as 2 raised to the y is equal to x. Once again, just change it from logarithmic form into exponential form. So, if I say, I'm actually, I'm actually going to start with the uh, y values here. If y is negative 2, 
this, the x value would be 1 fourth. If y is negative 2, that would be uh, 1 over 2 squared, and x, the x value would be 1 fourth. If the y value is negative 1, the y value is negative 1, then 2 raised to negative 1 is equal to 1 half. If the y value is 0, 2 raised to 0 is 1. If the y value is 1, 2 raised to the 1 is 2. And if the y value is 2, that would be 4. If the y value is 3, 2 raised to 3 is 8. So that's normally how I think about it. I think about it going backwards like this. So first thing I'm going to do is, if I've got to graph this, I'm going to graph the parent function. So I'm going to make my points here just to figure out what it looks like. So when x is 1 fourth, right here, really tight over there, it's negative 2. Uh, when x is 1 half, right there, it's negative 1. When x is 1, the value is 0. When x is 2, the value is 1. When it's 4, Four, it's 2. And when it's 8, 6, 7, 8, it's 3. So we get something looking like this. The question is, is this ever actually going to be going down here? And the answer is no. No, it's not. It's never going to cross the y-axis. It's never going to cross the y-axis. If we think of these as inverses, because that's what they are, these are inverse inverses, two, if I said y is equal to 2 to the x, we would have, if you remember, something looking like this. Like that. And if I reflect this over the y-axis, as we can with inverses, it's going to be going down like this. All these points match up here. Just switch the x's and the y's. Switch the x's and the y's here. It's going to be going down. It never touches the y-axis. You may be saying, saying to yourself, well, how is that possible? Well, think about it this way. 2 raised to what power will give me 0? 2 raised to what power would equal 0? Because that's what we want the x to be. Doesn't matter. 0 doesn't work. If y is 0, because 2 raised to 0 is 1. Uh, doesn't matter how if I plug in negative 1,000. 2 raised to negative 1,000 is just 1 over 2, to, 2 raised to 1,000. It's a really, really small number, but it never actually gets there. So we never actually get to the axis there. We have an asymptote going down this way just like this asymptote. Never touches it. So coming back to my original problem here, if I've got a graph, y is equal to the log base 2 of x plus 3. What am I going to have to do? Well, I'm going to have to, I've got my basic graph here, plus 3 just means I'm going to have to shift everything up 3. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, Sorry, right there. And we get a graph looking like this. So what is the domain for this right here? The domain is 
Well, all the x values that are covered. Well, the x values are covered all the way over here. Does it ever actually reach zero? No, it doesn't. So the domain of this is going to be all x values greater than zero. Or you could write it zero to infinity like that. The range. Well, I could, are all the y values covered? The y values covered by this, this just keeps going down, 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 down. It just keeps going down, so that's going to be negative infinity. And it keeps going up too, so it's going to be going up to positive infinity. Or you could write all real numbers. So the domain is all numbers bigger than zero, and the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's do this next one right here. Graph y is equal to 2 log base 3 of x minus 1. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do y is equal to log base 3 of x. Not x minus 1 yet, just the basic one. But because logarithmic form is kind of difficult for me, I'm going to change it into exponential form. 3 raised to the y will give me the x values. So if y is negative 2, 3 raised to the negative 2 is 1 ninth. If I've got negative 1, 3 raised to the negative 1 is one third. Three raised to the zero, if that's zero, three raised to zero is one. If the y is one, that's going to be three. If the y is two, that's going to be nine. If it's three, three raised to the three is twenty seven. So I'm going to graph my basic function here first. As always, there's an asymptote going down this way, just like there was here. So I'm going to have when x is 1 ninth, really tight there, it's down at negative 2. When x is 1 third, about right there, it's negative 1. When x is 1, y is 0. When x is 3, y is 1. When x is 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 2. And if I went way over here to 27, way over here off to the side, that'd be way up here at number 3. So here's my first graph. Looking like that. And if I graph y equals 3 to the x, it should be looking like this. Is that reflected over the line y equals x? Do they look the same? Absolutely. So we're good there. Now, the minus 1 here. Well, the minus 1 means I have to shift everything 1 to the right. So it's now going to be right here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So the minus 1 shifts it 1 right. The 2 right here, well, that means I'm going to double everything. I'm going to take all these y values and double them. So they're going to be twice as much. So instead of being 1 here, this is going to be twice as much. It's going to be at 2. Instead of being at 2 here, this is going to be up at 4. 0 here, well, twice 0 is still 0. This right here, instead of being at negative 1, it's going to be at negative 2. Instead of this, this value right here being at 
negative 2 is going to be at negative 4. So my new graph looks like this. And you may be wondering, well, why did this, why is it not getting close to zero here, Mr. Kuhn? Because when we added the one to the right, everything shifted one to the right, including the asymptote. Even the asymptote shifted one to the right. So the best way to graph these is really graph the parent function and then just use shifts. These are, the, these are kind of the toughest ones to graph. Normally we graph the exponential functions here. That's normally a lot easier to work with, but these are the toughest ones to graph. So the big idea here we have going on is uh, the exponents. Logarithms find exponents. So for example, if I would looked at this graph right here, this graph right here, and I said, hey, If the number in here were, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 raised to what power gives me 6? I can look on here and say, uh, well, it's not 2, it's not 3, looks like it's going to be about 2.7. So that's how you graph with logs, and that's what do they find? Logs find exponents. Once again, most important thing here, logarithms find exponents. Make sure you can change it into logarithmic form. Make sure you can evaluate it. Probably think of it like this instead. And the other big question, why do we do this? Why learn about logarithms? They find exponents. It's the inverse operation. In math, we always want to be we want to be able to go forwards and backwards. This is the opposite op operation for exponential functions, logarithms. But in the science, these are very helpful because they find the magnitude of earthquakes. You've heard of the Richter scale that's used in California. There's another scale that you can use that is more applicable uh, in all parts of the world, but both of them use logarithms to describe the magnitude of the earthquake. And they also apply to sound and de uh, decibels and the intensity of sound, where uh, something's uh, 100 times as loud, it's only going to be up 20 decibels, and we'll get to that. So there you go. Logarithms find exponents. Make sure you can change it back and forth. Thanks for watching.